Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India To get insight on the functional form of the eigenfunctions and the precise energies, let us now again start with the Schrodinger equation h psi is equal to e psi. But now pre multiply the equation on both sides by b instead of b dagger. So, the Schrodinger equation is h bar omega b dagger b plus half psi is equal to e psi and we pre multiply both sides of the equation by the operator b. This gives h bar omega b b dagger b plus b by 2 psi is equal to e times b of psi. We want to make the left hand side of this equation look like the Hamiltonian. We now use the commutation relation and write this b b dagger as 1 plus b dagger b. So, this becomes h bar omega b dagger b plus 3 by 2 and we write the b psi outside is equal to e times b psi. And if we make the operator on the left hand side look like the Hamiltonian operator, then we get h bar omega b dagger b plus half b of psi is equal to e minus h bar omega b of psi. So, we see that if psi is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian, then b of psi is also an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian because here we have h of b of psi is equal to e minus h bar omega b of psi, but the b of psi has an eigenvalue which is less than the eigenvalue of psi by h bar omega. This operator b acts on an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian and gives a new eigenfunction with eigenvalue lower by h bar omega and since this lowers the energy it is called the ladder down operator. We now make an argument that for a harmonic os oscillator with potential energy v of x is equal to half k x squared where k is positive, the total energy is thus positive and this implies that the lowest eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian must be greater than 0. So, the eigenvalues are have a lower bound and all values are greater than that lower bound. Now, suppose that psi naught is the lowest energy eigenfunction. So, h of psi naught is let us say e naught times psi naught and we have seen that b of psi naught is also an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian with an eigenvalue e naught minus h bar omega. So, that implies that there is another eigenfunction which has energy lower than e naught. So, there is a contradiction here. On the one hand, we are saying that psi naught is the lowest energy eigenfunction, and on the other hand, there seems to be another eigenfunction b of psi naught which is having an energy lower than e naught. 
this contradiction can be resolved and this equation can be satisfied if b psi naught is equal to 0 and b psi naught equal to 0 implies that 1 over square root of 2 I am just writing the definition of the operator b here this is equal to 0. So, psi naught satisfies the following equation here and this implies that d by d q of psi naught is equal to minus q times psi naught. This is a differential equation for psi naught and to solve it we can take d psi naught by psi psi naught. So, we do a separation of variables is equal to minus q dq. Integrating this equation gives ln of psi naught is equal to minus q squared by 2 plus a constant of integration which implies that psi naught is equal to some constant e to the power of minus q squared by 2. So, this gives us a functional form for the lowest eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian. Furthermore, the eigenvalue of psi naught, the lowest eigenfunction is h of psi naught is equal to h bar omega the Hamiltonian B dagger B plus half times psi naught and we have seen that B operating on psi naught is equal to 0. So, that is h bar omega 0 plus half psi naught. So, the eigenvalue is simply h bar omega by 2 times psi naught and the eigenvalue is simply h bar omega by 2. So, far we have seen that if psi is an eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian, then B dagger psi is also an eigenfunction with eigenvalue E plus h bar omega and we have, we have seen that B of psi is also an eigenfunction with a lower eigenvalue E minus h bar omega. Moreover, we have seen that the lowest eigenfunction has the functional form c e to the power of minus q squared by 2 and this has an eigenvalue h psi naught is equal to h bar omega by 2 psi naught. The question now is what is the functional form of the other eigenfunctions besides the lowest eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator. And for this we can operate with the ladder up operator on the lowest eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator and get all the other eigenfunctions. So, let us do that now. So, we operate with B dagger on the lowest eigenfunction psi naught and we write this explicitly C is the constant associated with the psi naught and the square root of 2 is part of the B dagger operator d by dq by q e to the power of minus q squared by 2 and when we take the derivative and write this we get c over square root of 2 minus e to the power of minus q squared by 2 minus 2 q by 2 plus q times e to the power of minus q squared by 2. And on simplifying this becomes c over square root of 2 q e to the power of minus q squared by 2 plus q e to the power of minus q squared by 2 which is c over square root of 2 2 q multiplied by e to the power of minus q squared by 2. The functional form for the first excited eigenfunction b dagger psi naught we can write this as psi 1 is thus c over square root of 2 2 q e to the power of minus q squared by 2. Let us find 
the next higher eigenfunction and for that we operate with the B dagger operator on psi 1 that is in other words B dagger on B dagger of psi naught and that is some c prime by square root of 2 minus d by d q plus q operating on q times e to the power of minus q squared by 2 that is equal to c prime by square root of 2 minus q e to the power of minus q squared by 2 minus 2 q by 2 minus e squared e to the power of minus q squared by 2 plus q squared e to the power of minus q squared by 2. We take e to the power of minus q squared by 2 common because this is there in all the terms and then this becomes c prime by square root of 2 q squared minus 1 plus q squared e to the power of minus q squared by 2 and that gives c prime by square root of 2 2 q squared minus 1 e to the power of minus q squared by 2 and this is the functional form of of psi 2 or the second excited state of the harmonic oscillator. We notice that the eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator have a certain pattern in their functional form. So, if you look at psi naught first, you see that this is simply the Gaussian function e to the power of minus q squared by 2. The psi 1 here is a Gaussian function e to the power minus q squared by 2 multiplied by a polynomial 2 q and again if you look at psi 2 it is again the Gaussian function e to the power of minus q squared by 2 multiplied by another by another polynomial and the order of the polynomial is equal to the quantum number of the function. So, the psi 2 has a polynomial of order 2 and the psi 1 has a polynomial of order 1. and the psi naught has a zero order polynomial or just a constant multiplying the Gaussian function. The polynomials which are part of the functional form of the harmonic oscillator eigenfunctions are called Hermit polynomials and some of the lower ones have the following functional forms. So, H naught of Q is just 1, H 1 of Q is equal to 2 q, h 2 of q is equal to 4 q squared minus 2, h 3 of q is equal to 8 q cube minus 12 q and these forms of the Hermit polynomials can be very easily looked up in any textbook on spectroscopy or quantum mechanics. The last thing to remember is that the variable q which is the dimensionless coordinate was introduced by us to simplify the derivation and q is actually related to x in the following manner h bar x. So, all of these functional forms are actually functions of x psi of x and for example, the lowest eigenfunction psi naught of x would become c e to the power of minus m omega by h bar x squared by 2 when we write it in terms of x by replacing q with x. This can be further simplified as c e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2 where alpha is equal to m omega by h bar. In terms of k the alpha is equal to square root of k m by h bar. The eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian have the following functional form. 
So, if you take the nth eigenfunction, this is some constant multiplied by a polynomial of degree n multiplied by the Gaussian function e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2, where alpha is equal to m omega by h bar. We have seen that this polynomial of degree n are the Hermit polynomials and we have looked at the functional forms of some of these. Now, the question is what is this constant c? Now, the c just comes from the normalization of the eigenfunction. So, for example, let us do this for the lowest eigenfunction. So, the lowest eigenfunction is psi naught is equal to c e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2 and to get c, we impose the normalization condition that is psi naught star psi naught dx limits from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1. This implies that c squared minus infinity to infinity e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2 multiplied by e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2 dx is equal to 1. And that means c squared minus infinity to infinity e to the power of minus alpha x squared dx is equal to 1. The function here is just the Gaussian function and the integral of this from minus infinity to infinity is a standard integral with value square root of pi over alpha. So, therefore, c squared times square root of pi divided by alpha is equal to 1 and this implies that c is equal to alpha divided by pi to the power of 1 by 4. The normalization condition for all other eigenfunctions can be similarly found and they in general depend on the quantum number of the eigenfunction, but the condition to normalize them is always the same which is minus infinity to infinity psi n star psi n dx is equal to 1. This is the normalization condition. The normalization constant depends on n and can be found by applying this condition. We will now look at the shapes of some of the lowest eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator. So, let us start with the lowest eigenfunction psi naught which is the normalization n naught e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2. n naught is a constant which we can obtain by using the normalization condition that we discussed. The functional form of this function is just the Gaussian function. So, if this is the x axis, then the function has the typical Gaussian shape like this. So, this is how psi naught looks. Let us look at the first excited vibrational wave function that is psi 1 is equal to the normalization constant multiplied by 2 root alpha x e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2. We note here that this is a function which is a product of two functions. This is a linear function and this is a Gaussian function. So, if we were to plot these, here is the x axis. The linear function is a straight line. This 2 root of alpha x is just a straight line like this. And the Gaussian function, which is the second part, is a function like this. 
and if we take the product of these two functions then we get a function which looks like this which has a 0 value at x is equal to 0 and it has a negative value first and a positive value and it looks like this. So, this is the shape of the psi 1 eigenfunction. Let us look at the next eigenfunction psi 2 which is n 2 times 4 square root of alpha x squared minus 2 e to the power of minus alpha x squared by 2. So, we notice that here we have a quadratic function multiplied by a Gaussian function and the first function is a parabola, but the value of the parabola when x is equal to 0 is minus 2. So, if you were to plot that parabola, it looks something like this where the value here is this this much is minus 2 and the Gaussian function is again like this, this is the x axis. So, the product of this function will be like this where it has a value initially positive, then negative, then positive again and then goes like this. So, this is the shape of the psi 2 eigenfunction. Psi 3 has the functional form n 3 multiplied by now a cubic polynomial. So, square root of alpha x cube minus 12 alpha x multiplied by the Gaussian function. So, here is cubic multiplied by Gaussian. The cubic function looks something like this and the Gaussian function looks like this. So, the product of the two gives a function which has a 0 value at as x is equal to 0 and it has a negative value initially, it becomes positive, goes through the 0 and it has a function shape and it has a shape which looks like this. So, this is psi 3. If we write these functions and their energies along with the potential energy function, then the entire picture looks something like this. Here is the potential energy, the lowest function looks like that. This is the energies are all equally spaced. So, I can draw the energies like this. This is psi naught, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and if I draw the shapes, they look like this and like that and like that. The energies of these different states are h bar omega by 2, 1 plus half h bar omega by 2 and for the psi, psi 2, it is 2 plus half h bar omega by 2 and here it is 3 plus half h bar omega by 2. This gives a complete picture of the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillators.